How did you overcome those challenges? And we'll start with Jen. Is there a mic there? So, of course, she puts me on the spot. <laughs> and I know those of you who know me, I'm not much of a talker. I speak through my rhythm on my drums. <laughs> but anyway, moving right along. Um, how about the question, uh, first, my first question, um, how did I become interested in drums? Well, it all started. I brought a few photos along with me today. Um, it all started at Sydney School of Dance. And this is my aunt, Sydney King. This is Baba Crowder, who was, who still is, he's passed, but he's still the world's greatest uh, percussion player to me. And this is Jan Jeffries. And uh, so, at dancing school is where I've, uh, I learned my knowledge. And that was because during tap, ballet, and interpretive, uh, dancing, when I heard them drums for interpretive, my aunt called it interpretive dancing instead of African dancing, because she studied under Catherine Dunham technique, and it was all about utilizing that. So we called it an interpretive, because it wasn't taken from her, or she wasn't giving us a piece. It was what our dancers interpreted, their movements, like uh, from bar work to sound of the floor, yeah? And so through that, enabled me, when I heard the drums, like I said, I was like, well, I'm out of dancing. <laughs> I'm not doing this, and so, <laughs> I'm so glad I can get rid of ballet. I was so tired of points and, <laughs> and time dues and PAs and all the Asia pays. Oh my God, I had enough of that. So anyway, but back to the point. <laughs> no, if you wanna play the drums, you have to continue to dance. I wasn't too happy about that. So anyway, that gives us to this picture. And so with this picture, I got my first bongos. Yeah. These were my first drums, yeah. Oh, I thought I had it going on. But little did I know. <laughs> well, the drummers that were at dancing school, they had congas. You know, just like this lady over here. We had congas, right? We didn't have June Junes and Jim Bays. We had Congress and Cowbells and Shaker Rings, yeah? And so through that, I was like, oh, I didn't, I really went crazy. But see, I thought I was really tough because I had two. But then all of a sudden, one day at home, I don't know what I did, but they said, we're going to take your drums from you. And I was like, what? Oh, no. But see, little did they know. Bongos. <laughs> have a screw in between them, right? <laughs> That's what holds the two heads together. So I was like, all right, come on, you can have it. I don't care. So I went upstairs in my room, unscrewed them, took the, the little head, the one I didn't like anyway, <laughs> and said, here, you can have it. They didn't know I stuffed the other one underneath my bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I still played my drum, but in silence at night. <laughs> I got under the covers and my blanket, and I just... <laughs> they didn't even realize, so I still got over it. But long story short, uh, my mission was because, it's still because of dancing school. Uh, when I was coming up, no women, girls, no, we did not play drums. And the, the biggest point in my uh, highlight with that was because when I started talking to drummers and like asking them, all right, so now what, you know? They never wanted to teach me nothing. The only one that showed me rhythms was my cousin, Buddy King. And he studied with Baba and a whole bunch of others. I mean, I could lame a, a true of, slew of drummers, but, and this is under the Yoruba study of the Kungus, yeah. And so through that, then they finally told me, well, if you want to play drums, you need to go see our sister down there. And, but she explained to me, like, well, women don't play drums. I'm like, what? And I was a little girl, and I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> I'm going to, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to play my drums when you're not here. Because this is my aunt's dancing school, and I can do what I want to do. <laughs> that was my attitude, you know. So I would watch in class, I mean, when I wasn't dancing, and watch their hands. Doc Gibbs came to us. He's a left-handed player. Everybody else was right-handed. When I saw the difference in that, I was like, well, I know what I have to study. When I go home, instead of me just playing the rhythms, 
I'm going to learn how to play them on the left hand. And I went back playing it just as strong as he was. Mm -hmm. Because I just felt that in my heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew I had to, I just knew I needed to learn and I wanted that. It was just such a strong feeling in my life. And so to sum all that up, those rhythms and throughout my lifetime has enabled me to travel throughout the world mm -hmm. and to recognize that the drum is very, very powerful. And yes, just as you said, skills are very, very important because um, although the djembe and congas, uh, bata drums are hand instruments, I have an un uncle and an aunt. And I was looking at you uh, as your daughter was just talking. I have an aunt, her name is Aunt D. well I call her Aunt D. D and Dave McHarris. They're also in the film of Cotton Club. They're the silhouette uh, duo that are doing the drumming, and at the end they dance. Well, fortunately, they were in my life. They're not my real aunts and uncles, but when they came through my house, they were drummers, and he said, oh yeah, you wanna play drums? Get them sticks. Where you paddle paradiddles? That's why I admire you so much. And let me tell you something, paradiddles, kept me, <laughs> still keep me today in tune because from Philadelphia to Japan to Hawaii, back to uh, where, wherever else I've been throughout the world, when I need to like study something or when I have free time, I take my sticks and go through my rudiments. And that's what keeps my wrist together and also keeps my mind together. Because staying focused is so important. And I'm going to leave you on that note. Okay. <laughs>